This year, the COVID-19 crisis has created a uniquely challenging situation for advocates and an exceptionally dangerous situation for victims of domestic violence. Increased economic hardship and unnecessary restrictions on travel have amplified the risk of harm for those who are in close and more frequent proximity to their abusers, meaning that most victims have lost access to those precious few moments where they could find an opportunity to seek help during work or school hours. So, as the pandemic goes on, how can we make sure to support survivors and make change in our city and state's relationship with domestic violence? What are all the pieces needed to bring peace to the homes in our communities and the individual survivors seeking to find safety and healing? First, we must accept and acknowledge that domestic violence is not simply a criminal justice problem. This is clear in the fact that during normal times, only about half of domestic violence crime victims call the police. We will never make significant and long-term progress if we don't change our mindset on our approach to one that addresses all of its manifestations as an economic, a public health, a community, and a human rights problem. Second, we must widen our view when it comes to policy and programs. There are so many factors that impact the underlying causes and cyclical nature of intimate partner violence, including housing, systemic racism and inequity, food insecurity, and other societal pressures, instances of which have been magnified throughout this health crisis. Lack of access to affordable housing, comprehensive paid leave, affordable health care and child care means a victim's ability to escape an abusive situation is greatly diminished. As a society, we have to think in bolder ways to develop comprehensive survivor-centered solutions and policies. Too often we become boxed in by what is believed to be politically feasible. It is time for the scope of what is possible to become much, much wider. For as the poet Lucille Clifton said, we cannot create what we cannot imagine. Third, we must better engage the community. In every situation where domestic violence occurs, the community is impacted. We must intentionally create opportunities for connection within our own communities and also ensure that all victims have access to the services and resources they need, including emergency shelter, support, and civil legal assistance. What is occurring right now behind closed doors in homes across Colombia, perhaps even next door to you, is affecting all of us, whether or not we are able to see it. While we focus on the impact of the pandemic, the impact of domestic violence continues and we will experience the repercussions for months, years, and even for decades into the future. So today, ask yourself, what is your piece? What is your part to play in ending domestic violence? How does it fit into the picture of collective action that will solve this urgent issue? We must all act now to bring about the robust necessary investments in prevention, pathways to healing, and support to create a safer community in which no one fears violence from someone they love. This walk is a beginning, but the path is long and we must commit to move forward every day until we reach our goal.